Hi guys, welcome back to Max Electronics. In today's video, we will be reviewing this desoldering gun. I've actually got, that's my second one, and the first one's still good. So, uh, what happened is, um, at uh, home in my lab, I do have a proper desoldering pump, which is this one here. That is a vacuum one. Um, actually, it's it's blue, but I had to buy another gun because that little thing broke, so it, wouldn't, it wasn't sealing the glass tube, so I bought a replacement gun and just redone it. it. Turns out the one for my version is a lot more expensive uh, than this one, even though they're identical because there's a, in this one there's a little um, uh, spring switch, so and just one extra wire, that's it. The rest is literally identical. Same voltage, same wattage, 80 watts, 24 volts. So anyway, and I need a one for work where I don't do a lot of uh, precise electronics. I do simple things like, you know, changing a fuse or maybe change capacitors, and I need a desoldering gun. Now, I am used to using those ones and as you know the tip melts a lot like you can see in this one and then it's 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 pretty shit you gotta heat it up press it then you gotta charge it again then you gotta hold it and press again so i bought uh which i don't have with me i think i've thrown it out one of those ones that you see on your screen and they are the worst it's even worse than this one so there's another option which is that one that i thought okay i'll give it a go and I bought it and it's actually pretty good. So we'll have a look at the construction. That's what comes in the box. It comes with a little manual that is um, going straight to the bin. It comes with the spare tips, uh, though tips you may want to stock up on them because they are pretty, pretty bad. So, well, they, they work. I mean, it's, uh, they will do the job, but they will deteriorate within maybe, you know, a week of everyday use. So. We will have a look, and it's got a little poker to clean it. So we'll have a look at the design, what's inside, and um, how to use it and how good it is. So another thing that I did mistake with the other gun, I decided to swap the nozzle. I didn't check, but that screw that holds everything together inside. And because I used it and I needed to replace the nozzle since it was corroded, I started unscrewing and it was turning the insides. And you'll see when I open it up, there's two wires that kind of shorted to the chassis and uh, it blew the wire so I fixed it but that's something to be aware of make sure when you get it grab a screwdriver and tighten this screw well fairly enough don't, don't snap it but tighten it so we're going to open it up well to empty it which is you don't really empty it you do have to get too used to oh, I haven't opened it yet this is literally brand new and we have to change the cord because that's the European plug so that is a little uh, where the wires are that's how it opens. So we've got a little plunger here with a electromagnet or solenoid, shall I say, inside there. You can just see it. Let me get the light in there. I don't know if you can see it. You probably can. It's just a solenoid coil. There's a button here. So we'll uh, start by opening this up. And that opens fairly easy. So we're going to remove the tip. And we're going to unscrew this screw. Just got to make sure I don't lose it. And then we'll unscrew this one here. Now, this is not a grounded device, so you can add your own grounding, um, which is probably a good idea. And now that will slide right off. And you can see why it's a good idea. So. What happened was here, uh, as I was turning it, the tip turn, uh, the tip connects to here. So when you turn it, and if you miss it, that thing can unscrew as well. So I can literally just twist that, and that thing comes off. As you can see the joint there. So as I was screwing it, that got uh, turned and shorted onto the chassis. So it's just the nichrome wire, bare nichrome wire. There's no insulation between... Uh, this and the nichrome wire, just the space. So if I put this back on and put the cable here, you can see that it's literally centered there. It's not touching the sides, but it is centered there by that little metal piece that just rolled away, which is the little weight, I guess, for the uh, thermal weight. I'm sure there's another word for it. Anyway, so that's what's inside here, it's just that. So I'm going to assemble this together and then we'll have a look what's inside here. 
Uh, that part is back assembled. Uh, again, make sure you tighten the screw so it's nice and tight. And the nozzle, when you put it on, do not tighten it too much. Just, you know, finger tight and not more. The reason is that uh, it does get corroded when it's hot and it'll be a nightmare to remove it later on. Uh, so just finger tight and it, it makes it seal pretty good. The other thing when you're using it, um, we'll get to that, I'll show you with the button. You have to get used to that as well. Uh, first when I got it, it was a nightmare, a bit of a nightmare to use, but um, I got used to it and I'm pretty good with that now. So we'll open this part, we'll have to replace the cable anyway, and I'm pretty sure I've got the cable somewhere nearby with a standard Australian plug, there it is. So let's pop this off. There we go. And inside we've got a little micro switch and uh, a circuit board, so we'll pop that off. There we go. So there is uh, some wiring going in there. All it's got is a capacitor and a little bridge rectifier and the button that is switching between, so there's nothing much inside. Um, so I'm going to disorder this cord because I will be placing a different one here. Now you can add a shielded one, which is probably good if in case you twist the wires and you know, if you have a live on that and you ground it and you start holding the circuit board, you know, and you desoldering and holding it there and uh, you might end, get, end up getting shock. So just add a little grounding wire. I won't do this because it's just for small jobs. Uh, I do have a proper desoldering gun. So that wire can go straight into the bin. And we'll put the new one on. Okay, so this wire is a bit thicker than the original, so it's it was really hard to push it through that conjuring, but uh, I've managed. So I know I'm not supposed to carry the solder on there, but it's all right. Okay, so that can go back in. It's going to be uncomfortable doing this on camera, I'm pretty sure. I'll try. That oh, wasn't that bad. Here we go. So let's put the lid back on and plug it in. Uh, just to be on the safe side, I'm going to plug it in through current limiting just in case because I don't trust Chinese stuff, you know. You buy it, you plug it in, and how many stories have you heard where you plug it in and it goes bang. So if I have a current limiting, I'll just see if it's going to go bang before it does. Uh, hopefully it doesn't. should be all good. And one more screw and let's plug it in and uh, I've got a board here with a few connectors that needs to be removed. It's just a spare parts board, so I'll remove all those. Uh, nice little connectors. Uh, we'll see how good that performs. So here we go. I'm gonna plug it into the current limiting. And there we go. And there we go. Okay, it looks good so far. Probably have to turn off current limiting. Yep. So the trick is when you're desoldering, obviously we're gonna wait for it to get hot. But when you're desoldering, you have to um, touch the component, and then when you press the button, so you you melt it, you press the button, and then you spit it somewhere before you let go of the button. If you just press and let go, you're gonna spit it all, all over the board. That's the first mistake I did, and you have a really bad splatter of solder on the board so always have to make sure that you hold the button and then spit it somewhere else like let go of the button pointing and at the bin or something like that so let's wait for it to get hot and then we'll try desoldering i think it's hot enough by now so first thing i usually like to do is grab a bit of solder and uh, just add it to the tip just to make sure it takes the solder well and I'll show you how bad it spits it out, so I'll uh, use something, uh, what can I use? Let's use this. So 
So you see the splatter that it just did? Alright, let's try desoldering. So let's go for that little orange board. And as you can see, it does a very good job. And here comes the port. So let me zoom in for you so you can see it right up close. Oh, make sure the lights don't get on the way. So let's try removing this long port. And here we go. You can see how clean it does it. It's almost better than the um, desoldering gun. This one's the ground, I think it takes a bit longer heating. It's consuming, by the way, 28 and a half watts. I think this one was the ground that needed more heating. There we go. So let's try pulling this out. Oh, the first one is still... Yeah, the first one's ground, so it's really deep. Let's add more solder. Another tip when you're desoldering older stuff. This is not old, so this is okay. Add fresh solder because it'll help it melt it better. So let's try again. There we go, that's better. And there we go, how easy was that? So yeah, very, very nice tool. Um, so if you do want to buy something, if you can't afford, you know, a thousand dollar desoldering gun or they can go up to like five thousand uh, dollars, this is in within 35, usually 30 to 30 to 40 dollars price for it. So um, you can find it in AliExpress or eBay. Very, very nice tool. So this is it for today's short video and a review. So I do recommend buying this. It is a nice tool, a lot better than uh, this and definitely a lot better than that other one that I showed you, that, which is pretty much that with the soldering iron on the end, worst thing ever. So here we go, I hope you enjoyed this video, I've got more videos coming up, we will be exploring something with this, I'll give you a hint, uh, it's an ACF tape, so stick around for that and um, there is a few more projects coming up that are pretty cool involving uh, this as well. So yeah, we'll see you next time. My name is Max. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. You can support me on Patreon as well and get exclusive access to some videos and uh, files. Bye.